once you get into the agency, like they've told you, here's your job that you're going to do. And there, there are several job families you can go into. So you do know generally what your job will be like, but you don't know where you're going to get assigned until much later. So what, um, was, what was the general job? So my job, like if you go onto the agency website, you'll see these different roles. So depending on who you've interviewed, most people hear about case officers. So they are meeting with assets in the field, collecting intelligence and reporting it back to headquarters. And then you've got analysts who sit at headquarters and sometimes forward deploy and they're receiving intel that comes in from case officers, from their assets, this raw intelligence, and they synthesize it, sorry, and make, and make sense of it and produce what we call finished intelligence. I sat in a role that was in between those two spectrums. So I, my role was a collection management officer, so a CMO. And I went to the farm and trained with all the case officers. So we all got the same training. And then after that training, I went to additional training to do this other role. So I would typically spend in a career half my time downrange or in the field, half my time at headquarters. And my job, like I would, I would still go and handle assets, but I would handle fewer than a case officer. They would, that's their whole role in life is to recruit assets and handle them. I would do that occasionally. And then the other part of my time was almost like a if you think of it as like a newspaper editor. So these case officers would come back and write up their intel and I'd review it. And my job was to know what the people reading intel needed and either tell the case officers to go collect that info or make sure that it's written in a way that that intel consumer can take it right away and make a decision with it. So because of that, I had to be pretty dialed into the analyst community and like the NSC, the folks who needed to read our intel, I had to know what they wanted. And then if a case officer is going out to meet an asset, oftentimes it would be, hey, Ryan, what do I need to do with this guy? And I'd say, hey, if you only have like 10 minutes, you got to ask him these two questions. That's what we have to get out of this meeting. Um, if you have more time, great, ask these other questions. And so that was kind of this relationship that I had with the field and then headquarters somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, where did you find yourself uh, overseas in that role? So we, that one I can't really say, but my first assignment was a very nice posting, um, big station. Can you say what continent? Europe. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we can say that. And then follow on I did was in North Africa. So very different. Yeah. But the, the difference between like some people want to go to a backwater place, middle of nowhere, very small station where the local security forces aren't looking after you all the time. You can go meet anybody you want. Usually a lot of guys who aren't married yet, that's where they want to go. Middle of nowhere in Africa. Yeah. I had already done some of the tough stuff that, you know, like I was good. My family wanted to go somewhere. Nice. So they came with so, you. Yeah. So we went together. And we got to do a lot of this work together, which oh, is wow. interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. So they're, so at that point, are, are you bringing them into the loop as to, hey, we're actually, this is what we're doing. And like, did they know? My wife knows the whole time. Yeah. yeah. So your spouse often knows. And that's supposed to be that way. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the kids, it's, I assume it's a discretionary thing. Yeah. Like you really want to be careful with that one, yeah. especially given that kids ages. are fucking stupid. Yep. And they exactly. do they do dumb shit. Yeah, they do. I mean, guys do dumb shit, but kids do really yeah, dumb shit. For sure. For sure. <laughs> were there any close so, calls? Like did um, your kids ever did, did they ever do shit where like you're gonna get your whole fucking family killed? Um no, but I mean they'd go on ops <laughs> with me that Dude, you know, I'll amazing. tell them about one day. Yeah. So they still don't know some of the shit they've no. been on? Wow. No. Can you I mean, I, I know that there's not a lot you can share. I mean, what can you share from any of that stuff? Um you know, I, I guess there, I, I would consider my wife was kind of like a secret weapon. She's just like Mr. And Mrs. Smith or what? Um, yeah. Like very, she's very outgoing, extroverted, talk to anyone. So part of what, like, depending on where you are, you're going out to these diplomatic receptions. Like I walked through as a kid, yeah. like I, for a million percent was walking through as yeah. agency guys were in the room or SIS guys from, from the Brits, like our close yeah. partners 
were working targets. I just didn't know it. I was just going to get like milk at night, yeah. you know, and they're running uh, developmental. Yeah. Um, but you'd go out into those scenarios and you're in, you know, big, big room, ballroom, you've got hundreds of people and you're trying to find interesting <clears throat> people. And when you have a wife who is engaging and people want to talk to, it can be really useful yeah. in that sense. So here's the burning question then is, is, uh, is like her being flirty ever part of it? I, she probably wouldn't see it that way. How did you see it? Um, you know, I, I think, yeah, I don't know. It's a good point. Like, I think you do get some of that. I mean, I guess, was, was that ever kind of uh, prior discussed where it's like, hey, this yeah. this guy, like, can you not really. bat your eyelashes a little <laughs> bit and like... Was there I, ever a gray I don't think we ever like we that? ever had to do that, but I for sure that will happen. Yeah. For us, it was more like she'd be really good at um, moseying up to another spouse. Oh, okay. And then like bringing me in to meet them, and then the guy comes over. Potentially, that's the person I want to meet. Yeah. Or it could be the woman that we want to meet, and and then she's like able to connect pretty quickly where I can't. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things with the agency that people probably don't see a lot of you really want a diverse group of people mm -hmm. because you don't know the target you have to go up against, like what their background is. How did they grow up? Did they grow up working on engines and traveling a lot or yeah. um, affluent? Or did they grow up with dogs? And like, who has that background that they yeah. can connect with? Yeah. And you just don't know. And so sometimes like when you're sitting around in the office and they're like, hey, we got to go after this person. They'll ask, the, based on that person's interests, who's the best person in the group to go talk to them? Yeah. And you've got a bunch of type A's who are all like, oh, I could go do I'll that. I'll fucking crush yeah, it. Let me go yeah. do that. <laughs> I don't know shit about it, but I'll do it. And then occasionally they'll be like, did somebody go to college at this school? And you're like, yes, I did. <laughs> um, or, you know, did somebody, was somebody in the yeah. military at a certain time or this part of the world? Yeah. And if you have that, like you get that target. Yeah. Is, uh, is the seduction aspect ever, ever part of it? Not necessarily, I mean, I know, you know, you and your wife had your kind of niche, but are there other couples or, or even agents where like you see in the movies where like that's legit, like there's a United States female, either case officer or spouse or whatever, where like she's a total hammer and it's like, this guy's a total fucking horn dog. <laughs> Go fucking rub up against him and, and make him think he's the big dick on campus. I, I don't think it happens that often. For sure it happens, but yeah. there's no like script going that direction. However... I will say there are times where they'll use hammers to go <laughs> test like pilot, like American or coalition pilots in different parts of the world to check their OPSEC. Oh, really? And like almost red selling them? Yeah. Really? <laughs> no shit. And, and I mean, <laughs> like, that's not even fair. You're going to have yeah, a pilot who's at a bar and you're going to talk to a, an ten. attractive 10. Yeah. Um, but what they will say, and this is no joke, like when you're at the farm or getting ready to go out, inevitably somebody will say to you, hey, you're like a seven here in the U.S. You didn't all of a sudden become a 10 when you got off the plane. Yeah. So if some hot chick is talking to you, a reason it's it. not because you're all of yeah. a sudden attractive. Yeah. So remember that. Yeah. And guys fail at that every all fucking time. The time. Yeah. No. But I will say other services use that tool. Sure. A ton. All the time. Yeah. 